In the month of June, we were on the four-part series on God can. This is in contrast to man can. Tonight is our final lesson. In the first lesson, we explore some reasons why it is more reasonable to believe in God. Second lesson, we learned about who God is, that He is a caring God. Last week, our third lesson, we look at some attributes of God, that He is sovereign and that He has a right to do whatever pleases Him and they do not need to seek the permission or the popular consensus of mankind. Tonight, our final lesson, we bring all this to application. If God can, so what? I want to share some verses on how God is able to work in your life. For our background, let's discover how God can. He was able to do mighty works in the past. For example, Psalm 78 talks about the wilderness wandering. Praise focus on the letters in red. He did marvelous things in the sight of their fathers. He split the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the waters stand as a heap. In the daytime, he also led them with a cloud and all night with a light of fire. He spread the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as out of the depths. He brought the streams also out of the rock and caused the waters to run down the rivers. Yet the people were rebellious. They still went on to sin against Him, to rebel against the Most High in the desert. They tempted God in their heart by asking food according to their desire. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that waters rushed out, streams overflow. In the past, God was able, but the people were still hardened. They continued to sin, and they did not cease to be increasingly demanding. Yet, they still went on to sin against Him. Are we any different from the people of the past. God is able to do mightily in the past and God is able to do the same in the present. Psalms chapter 46 tells us that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. 
God can help us. Whatever our struggles may be, He is just a prayer away. If God is our refuge, and if God is our strength, this means if we are leaning on God and we are finding protection from God and seeking God and relying on Him, not using God as a last resort or a genie in the lamp, but trusting our God that we walk with every day. God can help us, but only if we want. We have to accept His grace. We have to seek His protecting arms and we have to draw near to his thrones. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, puts it in this way. Having then a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold tightly to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who can't be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but one who has been in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore draw near with boldness to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace for help in time of need. Here we see how God can help us in the present times. God will not force His help on any of us. We have to seek it because not everyone will go to Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 11 the Bible says that Jesus came unto his own but his own received him not. This is a picture I took from the internet and it kind of chills me to the bone. After all Jesus have done. Never even heard a fry, causing his followers to build hospitals to feed the hungry. There are still some who spread hate, who throw the cross into the trash bin and want to kill Jesus. What is this guy Thinking. I wonder if he had an accident outside a Christian hospital. Would he still want to kill Jesus or to be admitted and find healing by the followers of Jesus? I weep for people like this. But to be sure, God is not mocked. God can help us with our needs. All of us are struggling with situations in our life. And when governments, doctors, lawyers, family and friends cannot help, God can. First Kings chapter 17 tells us how God took care of Elijah in the three years of drought and famine. First, by sending birds to feed him. 
and then by a widow. The word of the Lord came to him. Hide yourself by the brook, and it shall be that you shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and lived by the brook. The word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, get you to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain you. In drought, where there is no water and food is scarce, God has taken care of his prophet Elijah. When man cannot, God can. One of the names of God is Jehovah Jari, meaning that God provides and God can help us with our needs. There are many passages in the Bible about God's willingness to help us with our needs if we are willing to go to Him and to trust Him and to turn our life over to Him. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 is part of the Sermon on the Mount and it expresses God's care in such a beautiful way. Jesus says, Therefore, I tell you, don't be anxious for your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor yet for your body what you will wear. Isn't life more than food? and the body more than clothing. See the birds of the sky, that they don't sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into buns. Your heavenly Father feeds them, and you of much more value than they. Very simple logic. Just Look around you. How God takes care of His creation. Psalms 34.10 tells us that the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And in Romans, Paul tells us, Chapter 8, He who didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how would he not also with him freely give us all things? One time, our Lord Jesus stood up at the Mount of Olive, overlooking Jerusalem, watching people going into the city and coming out. And the heart of our Lord Jesus cries out, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Because Jesus says, How often I spread my wings like a mother hen and asked you to come and seek protection, but you would not. You were not. But most importantly, more than providing for this life, God wants to save you so that you can be with Him through all eternity. 
In John chapter 3, verse 16, one of the most famous verses of the New Testament, Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have internal life. This is the gospel message that God wants to save each one of us. That God wants to be with us for all eternity so that no one needs to perish. First Peter chapter 3 verse 21 Looking back to the days of Noah, Peter says the light figure similar to the ark in the time of Noah, whereunto even baptism does now also save us. And to make it clear, it is not the putting away of the field of the flesh, but rather it is an answer of a good conscience towards God. So that when we come out of the water, it is a light figure of the resurrection of Jesus. We are born and we all die. But if we die with Christ in baptism, that is, die twice, then we will live with him forever. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, I write this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. The gospel message is simple. God came in the form of man. He died on the cross in order to shed his blood to save us. It is a costly price to pay for our salvation, but it is given freely to all who come and believe in Him and accept the new birth. There is no need to complicate the gospel message. We need to appreciate simply from the word of God and encourage our family and friends to accept it. Most important, as we go to God for salvation, we need to rely not on ourselves, but on the grace of God. Because there's nothing we can do that will merit us a place in heaven. And no one is good enough for heaven. But God can enable you. Even though we fall short by His grace. Ephesians 2 8 and 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, that no one would boast. It is not difficult to understand this passage. 
We are saved by grace through faith, not by anything that we can do, that we can boast about, because it is all God's grace. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 how Paul struggled with his thorn in the flesh. And God told him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Most greatly, therefore, I will glory in my witnesses that the power of Christ may dwell in me. When we learn about the grace of God and depend upon God rather than on our own abilities, we can do so much more. Indeed, Luke chapter 17, verse 10, spells it out. Even so, you also, when you have done all the things that are commanded you, say, we are unworthy servants. We have done our duty. Nothing to boast about, nothing to gain. We are just unworthy servants of God. And so, tonight, as we conclude this series, we want to say again that God exists. It just makes sense, especially when you think about how short our life is compared to the history of the world. There is no meaning to anything that we do if there is no God. But it is not good enough to believe and worship any God. I want to invite you to discover the God of the Bible. Because this is the God who takes care of you, who created you, and who can meet your needs. He is in charge of this world, and He can save you after this life is over. I want to close with Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. The Bible says, Without faith, it is impossible to be well-pleasing to Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He exists and that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. God exists and God rewards those who will seek Him. Let us